They shake, they rattle, and occasionally roll. They're the most violent, unpredictable racing machines man has yet conceived. Funny cars, floppers, plastic fantastics, call them what you will, but they're five second, 260 mile an hour combat packs of grandstands like no other breed. The Mount St. Helens of the quarter mile. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is our body color. Uh, you know, I bought this paint. Uh, I never used it before. Well, I used Tamiya paint, but I haven't used this color before. I should rephrase that. So I'm not really familiar with this color. I can only, you know, I went, but when I bought this can, I only went by pictures of other people's uh, uh, model cars or trucks or whatever they use this paint on to try to get a try to get a better idea of the shade. And it looked okay in pictures, but I started thinking, you know, I really don't want to screw up the Vega body. I don't really want to use it as a kind of like a test bed on whether I'm going to like the paint or not. I don't really don't want to screw that up. So what I thought about doing instead is using a test body and painting the test body with this to see if it's going to work or not. So what I have here is a, a spare body and I've taken the body and I painted the back half with the same primer we used on the Vega, the bright touch gray. The front of the body is the bright touch black. So we have gray and black primer. And we're going to paint it with this color. I have enough. I bought two cans of this, so I have enough. And we're going to see what this looks like over the gray. We're going to see what it looks like over black. And then we're going to see what it looks like, period, whether it's going to be what I'm looking for. All right, we're back, and we've got the body painted uh, in less than ideal weather conditions, but we don't care about the finish. We just want to see what the color looks like and what it looks like over the two different primers. So this is what it looks like. Um, it looks really, really green on camera. It's not that green, not that bright of a green. Um, but I'll, you can kind of see there the difference. Of course, the front of the car was the black primer, the back of the car was the gray primer. So I think we might be uh, reshooting the Vega with the bright touch black primer instead. I like the color. I think it's closer in color to the real one under over a black primer. I mean, than under over a black primer. So it's good to have test bodies. It's good to have scrap plastic laying around if you don't have a test body. That way you can use them as your test bed and you don't ruin uh, the car or whatever you're working on. You don't ruin that in the process of trying to figure out, okay, is this the right color? Or I wonder what this color looks like, you know, over a certain color primer. So that uh, this kind of helps you out and saves you a ton of time from uh, having to uh, ruin your, in this case, our car body. So we got the body now in black. We had a break in our weather yesterday. It's been really wet here. Uh, in fact, we were under a flood warning for the past couple days. But um, it uh, broke enough for me to put some black primer on the Vega, so we got it now in black. And then uh, I think it's looking pretty good there. I got the inside painted the black because that gets painted black as it uh, is anyway. Most funny cars were black inside. All I got to do is uh, paint where the paint stand is. I got to touch that up, hit that again. But uh, got the inside painted the black, the outside painted the black. Uh, when I'm going to put the green on, we'll just mask inside the windows. Keep the overspray down. Whatever overspray I get, we'll just use our um, Deco Art Black, which is a good match for this primer, and just touch up inside the body with the black and. Uh, we'll be good to get a uh, good to go there. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, the Vega body. Uh, I think by the time our wet weather has moved out, it should be ready to paint. Uh, so that's uh, the primer. Okay. Uh, we got the slicks done. Uh, I was working on them, and we got them finished. They're both put together and ready to go for our wheels. I just have to order the decals for the tires because I want them lettered. They get look nice lettered, so Slicks has them. 
so we'll uh, order them from Slicks. That's the tires. The engine, we had to do a lot of work on the engine, mainly run the wires on the engine. The kit gives you vinyl tubing, but I would really recommend against using it for the wires. It's fine for the oil lines, fuel lines, whatever else they want you to use it for. But I wouldn't uh, recommend using it for wires because the problem with the vinyl wires is that they have a mind of their own. They don't conform to the engine block very well. And what happens is that when you get eight of these wires, we'll call them wires, but when you get eight of these on there, you have a whole bunch of these arcs because this tubing does not want to bend very well. So you have eight little arcs here, and those arcs keep the body from closing down like it should. What happens is you'll put the body down and it'll spring back up because it's hitting this tubing. And it hits it, usually it hits it right right in this area here around the opening for the scoop it's where it usually hits and also hits this piece here it also hits right here around this area here it'll hit well actually up here on this piece and then as I said you'll close the body and it springs back up because it's sitting on top of the wires uh, plus two in my opinion this tubing they give you is too big to be spark plug wires in fact it doesn't even fit into the grommets You'd have to ream out all the grommets to get this tubing to fit. If you ask me, it's too big. It's out of scale. Um, so I found me some craft wire I've had. I don't know where I got it from. can't tell you who makes it. Um, I think I got it from Michaels, but I really don't know. It's been so long, I don't remember where I got it from. I can't even tell you what gauge it is, other than it fits into these holes. The grommets fits perfect. But this is the wire. I've used this wire before on uh, model stuff. I use it because it's pliable. It holds its shape. You can bend it however you want. It doesn't kink. It doesn't break. It doesn't do anything. It's it's great, uh, great wire. I think it's just basically a copper wire that's been vinyl coated with different colors. Because I have this in green, purple, blue, copper, bronze. Uh, everything but black, of course. Um... So I thought, well, I don't have black. Might as well get a little creative. And this is the green elephant, after all, and give it green wires. So that's why we have green spark plug wires on here. Of course, the real one didn't have green wires, but as I said, a little creative license, and I put uh, green wires on the green elephant, which I think is kind of spiffy, if you ask me. So there is the uh, wires on the elephant. Uh, the 426 was uh, called the elephant. So we got that done. Now, if you do this, well, if you do what I did and run wires instead of the tubing, there's two things you have to make sure you do. A, make sure you run it along the valve covers. Get it as tight as you can on the valve covers. Uh, get it really, really on the valve covers there. Don't have it sticking too far up. Actually, you don't want to stick it up any higher than the oil caps, the breather caps here. Uh, don't keep them below this level here. You should be okay. Also, too, when you come on this bank here, when you come in front of the block, kind of drape the wires down and keep it real close to the intake. Because when you put your blower on here, you got your blower belt. And, of course, the real cars, the wires were behind the belt, obviously. And you want the same thing here. You don't want it to interfere with the belt. So keep it uh, close to the block, close to the valve covers, close to the uh, intake. And you shouldn't have any interference with the blower. You shouldn't have any interference with the belt when you go to put the belt on. should be okay. So what I did was I put the blower together. And let me put this here so don't. There we go. Uh, I've put the blower together and kept test fitting the blower when I would run my wires to make sure I was where I needed to be so I wouldn't get any kind of interference trying to get the blower on there. And uh, you know, I would put like I would put a wire on, test fit the blower, put a wire on, test fit the blower. I kept doing that over and over and over to make sure that uh, I didn't uh, interfere with that blower. And it's really, really close here. Uh, this corner, where's my corner? This front corner here is where you're going to have issues. 
because we're right up against the wires here this corner right here of the blower where the wires come up to the cap but if you're careful it can be done and you can get that blower in there and uh, it'll sit like it should on the intake um, so the blower we got put together I went ahead and put together the top hat it's two piece I've dechromed it I didn't want it shiny chrome uh, I got the uh, butterflies in it they're kind of trapped between the two halves that's how it works but that makes them operable you can have them open or closed however you want that's kind of cool so we need to work on the seams once we get the seam work done we'll prime it in gray and then we'll use this color here which is a uh, platinum from uh, Delta Ceram coat uh, I want mine kind of a dull uh, aluminum look uh, kind of like a brushed aluminum kind of look and I think the platinum is pretty close to that and it'll kind of vary up the tones here so we'll do the top hat in the uh, platinum we'll prime it do it in platinum the blower will prime once we get the seam work done here between the front and back halves or the back plate and front plate you got that seam work there I want to get rid of uh, but once we uh, get that done we'll um, oops, prime it in uh, gray and then we'll use um, this folk art gunmetal gray which is a metallic -y, metallic -y? a metallic gray which some of those blowers were sometimes they polished them just depended sometimes they paint them uh, but uh, yeah we'll just use this metallic gray and again it'll help vary up some of that tone on the engine because we'll have a dark gray intake a lighter gray blower and then the um, platinum uh, top hat I think it'll look pretty spiffy we've got the fuel rail or the uh, injector rails painted the uh, uh, Krylon uh, like plating chrome we got that done the kit gives you two different injector rails make sure you use the shallow one not this real deep one for another model kit uh, so you can just throw this in your uh, spare bo parts box uh, but this is the one you want to use the shallow one and that'll fit underneath the top hat it'll go underneath here like so let me see if I can do this on camera real quick so you can kind of see there we go this will go underneath there like that and that's what you'll have when it's glued on then you run your fuel lines up to here so that's uh, the top hat, that's the injector rails, this is the uh, blower, our spark plug wires are on, I can put the fuel pump back on, I took it off because I was too afraid of breaking it, because I know me and with the kind of luck I have I ended up breaking it uh, while I was putting the wires on, so I just uh, unglued it and I took it off and then I'll put it back on now that I'm done running the wires. Uh, so that's uh, the story on the engine. All right, take care. We'll see you.